So an interesting question uh, that we often get is, how does HashiCorp pick you know, which problems to solve and how to solve them? Right? Today we have a portfolio of you know, six, seven uh, different major open source projects. So people often ask, how do we pick which problems to focus on and how do we build the tools? And I think for us, what it has really always come back to is saying, is there a core workflow problem that we can identify? Right? And what I mean by that, sort of very concretely with Vagrant, for example, is, is there a workflow challenge around, hey, I'm a developer who joins a new company, joins a new team, and it takes me two weeks to get my development environment set up because I have to read a wiki and follow a bunch of steps and then inevitably it doesn't work because the wiki is out of date. And so that's a very concrete and specific workflow problem, right? As developer joins company, developer joins team, how do I onboard and quickly get them productive? And so it starts with saying, is this a common enough workflow problem? Do we see this all over the place? And if so, can we click out a layer and say, is there a product that can be built around this? Right? Because not all workflow problems are amenable to that. Some workflow problems are problems of your own creation. Right? You've created a workflow that is so strange and you know, complex that really only you have it. So there's really no point in solving it in a tool in a more general way. But if it's a problem that is more general, right? something like setting up a development environment, right? almost every developer has that problem, that there's an opportunity to look at that and say, OK, can we build a tool that sort of simplifies that problem, abstracts it in a way that's going to be sort of nice to use and, and provides leverage to all of those users who have that same problem. And I think the kind of final piece of that is, you know, I think a, a common misconception is build it and they will come. Uh, and I think, uh, as Mitchell knows, it's, uh, it's very much not true. How many downloads a lie. Uh, did Vagrant do the first year? The first year, I mean, the total first year downloads for Vagrant were like 500. Um, and so, yeah, I thought, you know, you build this great technology, what I thought was a great technology. <laughs> you build this great technology and people will find it and use it and so on. It's not, not true at all. Right. So I think what we've learned from that is it's not enough just to find the workflow and then build the tool. You have to go farther and sort of educate the market about it, right? We have to go out there and teach people, hey, is this a problem you have? Take a look at Vagrant. Here's how it can solve your problem. And it really starts with, you know, the first hundred users, you know them by name, right? And it's really sort of a, a boots on the ground, educational, sort of building a community around these products. Um, and I think that's how we sort of think about it is starting from that workflow. Um, you know, Mitchell, is there anything you want to add to how we think about workflows? Yeah, I think, I think it's easy as, as, you know, we're a company that builds technical tools for technical people. It's easy in that sort of industry to, to get really into the technology and forget about sort of the people aspect. And a, a really important thing I think we do um, differently than a lot of other companies in our space is that we really think sort of human centric around the tool. Um, I think Vault is the best example of that because Vault took a fairly staggeringly different approach to security I, I, that different from other tools, different than security engineers expected sort of Vault to work, um, different in a lot of ways. And the reason for that was really we felt that security tools in their current form were so focused on security that they were basically unapproachable by people. And we, we flipped that around, which is like, how do we actually make it first approachable by people, but also be you know, just as secure? And so we thought about that first, and, and we do that across all our products. And so I think that brings a level of human-friendly workflow to that problem, which is core to the whole thing. And, and after that, you could build the product around it, and you could think through the really deep technical problems of you know, what data structures and technologies are going to use to solve it. You could get really into that, and it's fun, but you got to make sure you think about the people first. Yeah, and I think it, you know, we almost are continuing down that same sort of people-centric line of thinking as we look at our commercial products as well. Right? So we're really starting to look at what does it mean if I go from one user who's really productive with a tool like Terraform to how does a team of 10 people use it? How does a team of 100 people use it? How do 1,000 people use Terraform to collaborate together on an infrastructure? And what you really start to understand is you're not solving at that scale necessarily technical problems so much as trying to understand what is the workflow uh, that people should use to collaborate together? How do they sort of do that safely? How do we bring all these, these sort of different work streams together in a way that's going to compose nicely and be pleasant to use as opposed to like everybody hates the tool? So I think that has continued to be the way we think about it is great. We first solved the individual's workflow problem with the open source, built this tool that people really love. And then how do we look beyond that to how do we help teams of people, organizations of people also use it effectively and, and love the tools? Yeah, another way to look at it and just drilling into why the workflow is so important is that it's sort of you know, being the primary interface to the tool, whether that interface is 
the command line, a user interface, or something else, that it's usually the same workflow. That's what people have to learn, and you have to teach your whole company. That's hard to educate, right? If, if that's changing all the time, it's hard to re, re, relearn and, and all that sort of stuff. And so you could kind of get, iterate and fix the core technology. Uh, we try to get it right the first time, but you could, you could work on that. But if you're making you know, wide sweeping changes to the workflow, it's just disruptive to the whole organization. And so it's really important to get that right first.